During our prior basic exploration of rhythm, we discovered that Music 21 enables us to represent musical durations through a dedicated class. We'll import Music 21 and create a new note object with my note equals note dot note. Given that our current focus centers on rhythm, we need not concern ourselves with specifying a pitch for this note. It will automatically assume the default pitch of middle C. We'll define its duration in quarter notes by assigning a duration object to its duration keyword argument. Specifying a duration of two will set the duration of my note to a half note. If we create a stream to contain our note and insert a time signature object, Music 21 can easily represent more complex durations, automatically adding dots and time where necessary. For example, after creating a stream with a time signature of 3-4, when we append a note with a duration of 3.25 and call mystream.show, on running the program it will be represented in notation by a dotted half note tied across the bar line to a sixteenth note. Thus far, we've primarily dealt with durations built upon subdivisions of 2, 4, 8 and 16. We have not yet worked with any durations that break away from these conventional molds, such as those that would normally be expressed using tuplets. Fortunately, we can often create and manipulate these more unconventional durations with a process akin to what we've already practiced with simpler rhythms. Take, for instance, the case of eighth note triplets, where we seek to divide a quarter note into three equal parts instead of the usual two. To achieve this, we can assign a duration object to our note with the value of one third of a quarter note. We can then use the repeat append method to create a sequence of three triplet eighth notes, or to create a more complex rhythm with our triplet comprising an eighth note followed by a quarter note, we can instead create another note with the duration of two thirds of a quarter note and append it to our stream. We can easily extend this approach to other tuplet durations, such as quintuplets. In this case, we'll craft three new note objects and use the duration keyword argument to assign duration objects with values of one fifth, three fifths, and one fifth. We'll append the notes to our stream to create a quintuplet based rhythm. We've discovered in Music 21 a remarkable ability to wield rhythm with great flexibility through tuplets such as five subdivisions within the customary span of four. We might, however, wish to push the boundaries further still with a subdivision of five within the space of three, or seven in the space of five, leading us into the territory of what some call irrational rhythms, a terrain often traversed by those avant-garde composers like Brian Fernie Howe, James Dillon, and Michael Finnessy, who are associated with the so-called new complexity movement. In Music 21, tuplets are defined by their own dedicated class. We can utilize this to create tuplets with even more control and flexibility. We'll create a new tuplet object called myTuplet and as arguments provide integer values of 5 and 3, representing the number of subdivisions we desire and the number of usual subdivisions. Whenever we create unconventional tuplets, it's necessary to display their ratio in notation within brackets above. We can do this with myTuplet.tuplet.normalshow equals number. We must then append the tuplet object to our note's duration with my note dot duration dot append tuplet my tuplet. We'll once again use repeat append to create a tuplet comprising five eighth notes within the time of three eighth notes. With this knowledge, creating rhythms inside of our tuplets is also straightforward. Suppose this time we want to create a rhythm comprising an eighth note followed by a dot quarter note and another eighth note within a five in three tuplet. To achieve to achieve this, we'll need to define three notes, each with a duration to match our desired rhythm. Now to integrate our tuplet into these notes, we employ the append tuplet method. Lastly, we employ mystream.append to add these notes to our Music 21 stream. On running the program, we see the rhythm notated as expected. Now let's pivot towards the practical application of these ideas with the goal of crafting material to integrate into our compositions. In his article, Duration and Rhythm as Compositional Resources, Brian Fernie how offers valuable insights into his rhythmic thought processes. One interesting and straightforward example involves the dynamic interplay of two cycles. The first cycle, comprising the numbers 3, 4 and 5, governs the meter within each bar. The second cycle, encompassing 4, 5, 6 and 7, determines the count of evenly spaced notes per bar, referred to by Fernie Howe as impulses. Varied and engaging rhythmic material emerges out of the shifting relationships between these in 
interlocking cycles. To encode this within our program, we'll define a function called impulses in meter, tasked with generating a measure object of a specified duration and containing a desired number of impulses. It will receive two integer arguments, one representing the measure's length in eighth notes and the other indicating the number of impulses to be generated within that measure. Within this function, we'll first create the measure object. In Music 21, each new measure object is assigned an appropriate clef when created, but in this program we will ultimately combine multiple measure objects within a single stream to avoid the redundancy and clutter that would result from encountering a new clef in every individual measure. We'll employ the remove method to delete this. We'll need to append a time signature object which requires a string as input. We'll employ an f string to dynamically set the numerator according to the meter numerator argument provided by our function. Since our meter cycle consistently operates on eighth notes, the denominator will remain hard-coded as eight. Let's proceed to create a note along with its corresponding tuplet to convey our impulses. The critical aspect here is determining the duration of our note, which is contingent upon the relationship between the number of impulses and the meter numerator. To illustrate, suppose our measure is constructed with a meter of three eighth notes and contains five impulses. Conventionally, we should express this within a tuplet of five eighth notes compressed within the time frame of three eighth notes. However, if our measure maintains the same three eighth meter but accommodates seven impulses, the conventional depiction shifts to a tuplet of seven sixteenth notes within the duration of six sixteenth notes. In summary, when the count of impulses remains less than double the meter numerator, we should use eighth notes or an eighth note tuplet. But when the impulse count equals or exceeds double the meter numerator, sixteenth notes or a sixteenth note tuplet are more suitable. We'll employ a conditional to check whether the impulses should be represented as eighth or sixteenth notes, verifying if n impulses is equal to or greater than double the meter numerator. When this conditional holds true, we'll create a note and set its duration to a sixteenth note. Additionally, Additionally, we'll define a tuplet with n impulses within the time of meter numerator times 2. Returning to our prior example with n impulses at 7 and meter numerator at 3, this code effectively defines a tuplet comprising 7 actual notes within the standard duration of 6 notes. An else statement can handle the case where n impulses is less than double meter numerator. In this case, we'll create a note with an 8th note duration and a tuplet with n impulses within the time frame of meter numerator. We'll display the tuplets ratio enclosed within brackets positioned above it by using current tuplet dot tuplet normal show equals number. Then we'll append the tuplet to our notes duration. To complete our function, we'll employ our measures repeat append method. Here we designate the note we've constructed as the first argument and n impulses as the second argument to denote the number of notes to be appended to our measure. We return the measure, which now contains a tuple expressing the desired number of impulses within the meter we specified. Within a main function, our next task is to construct the meter and impulse cycles and devise a way of applying our function to recreate Fernie Howe's rhythmic process. We shall introduce two variables named impulse cycle and meter cycle, both of which will be assigned lists of integers. The distinct lengths of these cycles allow them to be repeated and recombined to yield fresh rhythmic material. Each can undergo a number of repetitions equivalent to the length of the other before reaching a point of convergence where the rhythmic potentials have been fully explored. Consequently, we'll create two new lists which will contain the complete repetitions of each cycle. To do this, we'll multiply meter cycle by the length of impulse cycle before then multiplying impulse cycle by the length of meter cycle. We now have two lists, respectively comprising meter values and impulse counts. Our next task is to integrate each pair of corresponding elements from these lists with the impulses in meter function. While various approaches can achieve this purpose, including a for loop or list comprehension. We shall opt for a more streamlined and efficient approach, leveraging Python's built-in map function, which will enable us to systematically execute our impulses in meter function on every pair of element within our lists. To use map, we must specify the impulses in meter function as the first argument, followed by the iterables to be passed as parameters to that function. We'll capture the outcomes in a list called combined cycles and use this list to create a new Music 21 
stream object, which encapsulates our generated rhythms. Invoking the show method allows us, when running our program, to visualize the results in notation, which effectively mirror Fernie Howe's rhythmic process. Going forward, this program presents a wealth of opportunities for adaption and further rhythmic exploration. One such avenue, for example, involves refactoring the function to incorporate a third cycle that dictates note durations. This adjustment would allow the generation of more elaborate tuplet-based rhythms instead of equally spaced impulses. I hope you found this exploration of tuplets and irrational rhythms in Music 21 engaging and hope you'll show support by liking and subscribing to the channel. Your feedback is especially valuable, so please share your thoughts, suggestions or requests for future topics about Music 21 and creative coding. Thank you for watching.